Well. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Trying to camp today with the Tundra in its stock form. And I drove further out, like past where we had a lot of snow here in Colorado, hoping to get to some drier areas. And we came up on top of this ridge and immediately got the truck stuck. Now there were a bunch of tracks coming through here and because I am pulling this trailer, it kind of scooted my back end off out of these ruts and now since I'm on these stock tires here, I'm just kind of buried. I don't think it's all the way down to the axle. It's pretty damn close though. I've got my friends from Free Spirit back here following me out to do some camping and stuff. And now we have to scrounge between the trucks to see if we have any kind of recovery gear. This is Alyssa. Are you enjoying this? Oh yeah. Getting stuck? <laughs> This is Ryan. What's up, dude? What's up? Is there anything in this truck? No. <laughs> a lot of gear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a bunch of straps and like basic recovery gear, but no winches on either of these trucks. And I don't know what I was thinking, but I did not bring any kind of recovery board with me. I wasn't planning on the snow. So stand by here. I might have to dig the truck out with my hands. All right guys, I need to interject a little bit here because whenever I'm out in a situation where I'm getting stuck and progressively more and more stuck, my priority of filming videos and telling the story, bringing you guys along on the adventure, that takes a back seat to actually getting out of the situation. So as we were working through this problem solving issue here, I was really focused on getting unstuck rather than filming. So the reason I'm out here on this day is because I want to test the limits of the stock Tundra before I go into heavily modifying it. I know what I'm going to do to the truck, but I wanted to just see how it was stock. That way I could kind of justify the changes that I'm going to make. And it makes more sense for you guys out there because you can kind of see what the truck is capable of in its stock form and then as it progresses over the next couple of months and years. I'm happy to report that before the snow, there were a few different rocky obstacles and things like that. I did bottom out on one of the bigger obstacles on the way up. But outside of that, traction on the dirt and even in some of the mud was completely fine with these tires and this setup and the truck performed great up until we got to this point on the trail. We were so close to the spot that we had picked out to camp and we were just coming around the backside of this mountain which was north facing and that means the snow doesn't melt there. Now unfortunately because both of the Tundras were pulling trailers, we couldn't really back out. We had a few different opportunities and we stopped about three different times to determine if we should go forward or not. And we were so damn close to where we were going to camp, but at this particular point, the snow got really deep and there were already tracks through there and not good tracks, I should add. There were clearly ruts where another vehicle had kind of slid off the side of the trail and of course they somehow corrected and made it out of there. But that was probably a day or two before because those tracks, which kind of like suck your tires into them, ended up freezing. So I was pushing ahead, trying to keep my speed up so I didn't sink down into the snow and those ruts kind of caught my tires. And then of course with the trailer on the back, it caught the trailer tires. And by the time that I was coming out of the rut that that other vehicle created, it was kind of too late and the trailer got sucked into the deep part of the snow and it just shifted the whole back of the truck. And once you come to a stop in deep snow like that, especially if you don't have good wheels and tires and all of this gear, then there's a good chance you're gonna be stuck there for a while. So now my truck is stuck with the trailer attached. Ryan is behind me. He's on the verge of getting stuck because we're kind of in this like off camber area with a ton of deep snow on the side. And I have a bag of recovery gear, which was from my Tacoma with all sorts of winching accessories. I also had a bunch of soft shackles and hard shackles, which are good if you have a vehicle with recovery points and there are no extra recovery points on either of these trucks. No traction boards, no winches, we're kind of SOL at this point. So we decided to use our surroundings. We're looking for sticks and logs and grass, anything that's kind of dry, rocks. We're trying to pack those under my tires to give it a little bit more traction and well, you'll see how this one plays out. Oh, this one's not grabbing at all. Yeah. So we're throwing sticks under the tires and I'm actually using crawl control for the first time, which takes a while, but I think that might actually get us out of here. So we'll see. 
That brings up the next point that I want to talk about, crawl control. This is something that I have actually never really used in my Tacoma because I already knew what I wanted to do to the vehicle, modifications to make it more suited for what I do off-road. Now I have seen videos of crawl control being used in the past and in certain situations it does work pretty well. It's kind of like magic. So at this point I'm going through all of the different tricks that this truck has. I'm in four high, I'm using the different multi-terrain selects. They have sand and rock and deep snow and things like that in four high. When you switch to four low, you get access to some more things like the rear locker and of course, crawl control. So for crawl control, you basically turn that on and then you can set the speed at which you want the truck to try to crawl out of the situation that it's in. I have not seen it work well in snow, especially on stock wheels and tires like this. So basically I set it in the low speed and I sat there for a while. A lot of times crawl control that comes with a lot of Toyotas it does work, but it just takes some time. So I basically put it in the low mode and just sat there. It's kind of like twiddling my thumbs, just waiting. And the truck would kind of raise up and the tires would spin. You could hear the ABS going off. If you've never used crawl control before, it sounds like the truck is braking, like falling apart because it's braking individual tires and it's just like trying everything to kind of get traction to crawl out of the situation. Now the snow was sitting in the shadows and with the previous grooves that were already there, it was pretty icy and then the more my tires spun on that snow, the more it melted and then again turned to ice. So the more I'm trying crawl control here, the deeper the truck is sinking and now at this point I'm buried up to the frame, the axles, I'm like about as stuck as you could possibly be in this situation. So then I took it a step further, we disconnected my trailer, which would have been an absolute pain to get out of the snowbank and connected to the truck, but we're trying everything here. I also went into my trailer and pulled out an Inhabit Design Works mat, kind of like the mats that are in my Storyteller. So it's a big rubber mat. I flipped it upside down so the rubber was touching the tires and as soon as the tires grabbed any traction on that, it just sucked it underneath the truck and it was pretty much a no-go. So in this situation, crawl control, rear locking diff, nothing was really working because we're talking about ice and snow. So we decided to get Ryan backed up to see if he could connect to my trailer or even just my truck and pull me out of the situation and his tundra started sliding off the side of the trail. So we're off camber with a giant snowbank on the side and we're both just kind of stuck there now with trailers attached so we were pretty helpless at this point. Well we've been at it for like an hour and a half at this point and I tried crawl control, I tried disconnecting the trailer, now Ryan is trying to back that tundra up and he is in the same situation. We would have turned around sooner if there was a place to, but unfortunately this trail is pretty narrow and with all of the snow we had no choice but to go forward. So we're getting to the point where we probably have to call someone because we don't have recovery boards. We tried a bunch of different things like mats underneath the tires and I'm basically just digging myself a hole over here. And with these trailers in the snow, it's just pulling both of our trucks right off of the trail. So we got stuck at around five o'clock and I believe this was like an hour later. So we're sitting there six o'clock now, the sun is really about to set and we figured we're both stuck. There is nothing we can do but call people. So we're looking for off-road recovery places in the area. We're calling friends to see if anyone could help. And we did get a hold of Ben at Free Spirit and we thought it was a good idea for him to get into Ryan's Tacoma because he had that at the HQ and it was hooked up. It had winches and recovery gear and stuff. So we called him to see if we could get him to bring that out to us. The problem is we are about two hours away from Golden, Colorado. So we had really no option but to kind of sit there and just struggle, kind of digging with our hands underneath the tires of my truck to hopefully get my truck out and then his truck is another story because it's completely off camber. Really not in a good situation at this point. All right, it's been another half an hour. We've made some phone calls and we've devised a plan. My Tacoma is set up to do stuff like this. Obviously all the recovery gear, because this truck is so stock, did not put enough recovery gear in here and that's my own fault. Ryan also has a Tacoma that's set up fairly similar to mine. That thing is capable and ready to tackle challenges like this. So we called our friend Ben and he's going to drive it from Free Spirit headquarters out here to pick us up. And then that's when the fun will really begin. I think the plan is going to be disconnect this trailer, 
put the hitch on the Tacoma, pull this thing out of the way. Then pull this Tundra back onto the trail, reverse out of here without having to worry about the trailer. And then we will rinse and repeat that process for my trailer, which is already disconnected. We'll just flip this thing around, pull it out with the Tacoma, and then back in here with the Tacoma to hopefully pull me out of what I'm stuck in here. And then I should hopefully be able to reverse out of here. Now we are about two hours from Denver and the sun is going to be setting very soon, which means all of this slushy snow is going to turn into ice. And that is not gonna make our problem any easier. So I'll check back in a little bit. So at this point, we decided to all just kind of sit in my truck. I left it running and we watched some movies on that little car play box that I showed in a previous video. So we sat there and watched Forrest Gump in its entirety, which is a fairly long movie. And we were trying to make phone calls. Our cell phones weren't working very well because reception is limited out there. So that's seven o'clock and eight o'clock and then about 8.15, 8.30, someone came to the rescue. Our friend that we called initially got in contact with another guy who actually lived kind of local to where we were, and he's an avid off-roader and was willing to come help us out. We had never met him before, he was just doing something out of the kindness of his heart, and his name was also Ben. So we're sitting there in the dark watching movies, and then finally we see some headlights coming through the trees in front of us. The original plan was to pull everything out from behind. However, while we were sitting there watching movies, Ryan hopped out and actually scouted up ahead. And once you kind of crest around the back of the ridge, it got pretty mellow because the sun is beating on the top of the hill. So we were stuck at like the only deep snow part on this trail and we decided that it would be better to come and rescue us from the front. So this guy Ben comes ripping around the corner in front of us and he crosses another kind of like slide off area, which was kind of tricky. He makes it through that just fine in a forerunner on 35s. This thing is kitted out and it's exactly what we need to get us out of there. So he pulls up to the front of my Tundra and of course, no real recovery points there. So to get my truck unstuck, what we did was we took a kinetic rope to the front of his bumper and wrapped it around the lower control arm on the passenger side of my truck to hopefully pull me back onto the trail and out of the ruts that I created. Now before we did that, we had to reconnect the trailer because we didn't want to get the truck unstuck and then have to fight with the trailer to get it back onto the hitch. So we put the trailer back on my Tundra and with just one or two pulls, he was able to free me from the holes that I created. And then I was sitting on some ice now, but it was flat enough and it wasn't off camber. So I was in a pretty good position at this point. We disconnected that kinetic rope and now Ben has no choice but to back out of the trail until there's a point that I can pass him so he can come in and rescue Ryan and the other Tundra behind me. Now Ben goes back across that little washout and of course it's icy and this time it sucks his forerunner way off the trail, like way more stuck than I even was in the beginning. So at this point it's dark and I'm really not filming much, which is why I'm just explaining this to you guys, but his forerunner got sucked into probably like three feet of snow and we battled with this one for a while. I pulled my truck up, we connected again between his bumper and my lower control arm. And then after like three or four bumps, I was able to pull his forerunner back out onto the trail. And now again, we're in a better position. We're kind of fixing problems and then creating new ones as we go. Now Ben's winch was unfortunately not working this day because that definitely would have helped us turn him around so he could drive out the trail. Backing out of this trail was really difficult because there's so much snow on the sides and your tires just want to kind of fall into the icy ruts that are already there. So he had two max tracks with him and Ryan and I just kind of spotted and guided him backing up this little hill off of the embankment and we just made a max tracks bridge the entire time. So front tire, rear tire, once he would roll off we would move it again. We repeated that process over and over again until the forerunner was finally able to back out of the trail and allow me to pass with my trailer. So I drove up until I hit dirt again and then walked back the trail to help. At this point, Ben decided to turn around his forerunner. That way he could back in, which makes getting out of there much, much easier. Now, luckily with the other Tundra, his rear tire was actually touching a little spot of dirt. So we used the Max Tracks bridge idea and basically 
was able to get his truck to drive out onto the trail with his trailer still attached. And then we repeated the process with the Forerunner and my Tundra and the other Tundra. So Max Tracks Bridge all the way across this washout until we all made it across and finally we're able to get out of there. We chatted with Ben for a little bit. He seems like a really cool guy. And Ben, if you end up watching this, thank you so much, dude. Like we would have been stuck there forever. We ended up getting out of that trail at about 10 o'clock at night. So we were stuck for five whole hours on this trail. The plan was to camp and talk about how it is camping with a stock truck, but this video really turned into a recovery mission and also a really good learning experience to see how this truck performs in its stock configuration. So now that brings us to the modifications that I'm planning on the truck. The first thing that would have been very useful is more ground clearance and a better wheel and tire setup. The ground clearance would have helped me from bottoming out over some of the rocks that we came across and the little creek crossings and things like that. So a lift kit, some kind of suspension package on there to get the truck up higher off the ground would be really nice for ground clearance, but also it would allow me to clear a bigger tire. This thing, at least the way I use a truck, it needs bigger, more aggressive tires, so that is definitely in the game plan, and this is all stuff that I've already planned on doing, but again, I wanted to see how the truck did without all of it. So lift, wheels, tires, that would probably be a pretty good package there. And then when it comes to recovery gear, I typically have Max Tracks mounted to my Tacoma basically all the time. And the only time I really use them is in snowy conditions. I just completely spaced on this day because we were trying to drive away from the snow. We still got stuck in it, so I'm gonna buy at least one, maybe two sets of Max Tracks to go in the Tundra as well. When it comes to other recovery gear, some armor would definitely be helpful, mainly a front winch bumper, because a winch would have got us out of this situation in about five minutes. Of course, didn't have that, but a winch up front, a little bit of armor, maybe some skids underneath, and then maybe something in the rear too, just to kind of add to the high ground clearance. That would go a long way in a situation like this. Also, an ARB compressor, or any kind of air compressor for that matter. I was thinking about airing down my tires, however, I didn't want to go too low on these stock wheels. That's where a nicer upgraded wheel will come into play, something beadlock or some kind of grip on there to actually keep the tire fixed to the wheel when you lower your PSI. I didn't want to air down and DB my tires and I didn't have a way to air back up. So having a compressor on board would have solved at least part of this puzzle for us. Another thing that would definitely be useful in this situation would be some lighting. I typically don't drive at night. I like to drive throughout the day. And then as the sun is setting, I like to be in camp and setting up before the sun goes down. In a situation like this though, it would have been really nice to have some scene lights, some bumper lights, and just more lighting in the entire area because I just had my trusty old stream light in my pocket and I clipped that to the brim of my hat. So that's kind of how I was seeing through all of this. This definitely wasn't the most glamorous day and typically people wouldn't even share stories like this, but I wanted to show you guys what this truck did in the snow. And this is kind of like a preface to what is going to be coming to the Tundra. I definitely need to get this truck more suited for the off-road scenarios that I am typically encountering. But at the same time, if you're not in the snow and you have a decent set of tires, a stock truck like this will definitely get you places. If I wasn't feeling as adventurous as I was that day, I probably would have just kind of opted out, turned around and went and camped on some of the dirt parts of the trails. But again, I'm pushing the truck. I wanted to see how far it could actually go. And I found that limit to the extreme. So that's the whole story about how I buried the Tundra and was stuck in the snow for about five hours. The build will be underway probably about a week from whenever you guys are watching this video and the truck will be sitting nice and pretty. Maybe we will go out and tackle the same trail again. By that point, the snow will probably be melted and it's a cakewalk. I could drive my van through this trail. But at least the truck will be ready for summertime and all of the adventures that I have coming up with the Tundra. So I'm stoked. Learned a lot about the truck and all the Toyota controls, which I've never really used before. And now I know where we need to take this build to make it more suited for me. If you guys have any questions, you can drop them in the comments down below. I'll try to answer anything as best as possible. And the very next video will be a redemption shot at camping where we actually went out last night, the night right after we got stuck, and we had a successful camp trip. It was probably one of the best camp trips of the year so far. So if you want to see how it is actually camping with the Tundra in its stock form, 
you can check back for that future video. Consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every single week. And that's all. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.